This week on The Gadget Show Web TV, Dion showing you how to make phone calls on your computer. And John's testing out the PSP 3000. Plus the latest in gadget tech news. Welcome to another edition of The Gadget Show Web TV. I'm John Bentley. And I'm Dion South. And later, I'll be showing you how to turn your computer into a telephone so you can make some calls. But first, I've been trying out the latest version of Sony's PlayStation Portable, the PSP 3000. It's now been over three years since Sony's PlayStation Portable Games console first appeared in Britain. Since then, we've seen a slimmer, lighter version, the Mark II PSP 2000, and now there's a Mark III, the 3000. It shares the same slim and light form factor with the 2000, but there's a number of detailed improvements, most obvious of which is the screen. It now has an improved contrast ratio and better colours. It also has a sort of anti-reflective coating, although I found that didn't make much difference, really. Um, in daylight. Inside though you do really notice the better colours and you also notice that it now has smoother movement because it's got a faster refresh rate. Though that does come at a bit of a cost because um, you actually see a few sort of interlacing lines like jagged edges on any straight lines that go across the frame and a sort of barring effect on uh, things that are moving up and down within the frame. But overall again it is an improvement. As you can see here in uh, my videos of the gadget show, the top PSP with the improved screen is noticeably better. The other new feature is that the PSP now has a microphone. This is because Sony clearly have aspirations to develop the PSP as a multimedia device and they've included some uh, software as well, including their own Go Messenger, which is a sort of chat program they developed with BT. But I'm actually going to try uh, Skype which should allow me to make phone calls with my PSP, which will be a first. For once, you can actually uh, control the PSP quite easily without a keyboard, because it's only got 10 digits on a phone keypad. So I've got to put the country code in first. United Kingdom, that's pretty good. And the phone number. Oh. oh. Connecting. <laughs> Hiding Dion's phone number. <laughs> Hello, Dion. Hi, John, are you all right? Yes, I'm calling you on Skype, but on my PSP. Oh, I was just wondering who it was. It came up with a private number. <laughs> it sounds good, though. Well, it's not bad. I mean, you don't sound terribly loud here. You've only got very tiny speakers. I think you probably want to use it with uh, headphones. It might be quite difficult in a noisy environment. Yeah, I'm just using my normal handset now, but I haven't, uh, I'm inside. It's quite quiet. Oh, good. So I'm in, I'm in the garden. It's getting a bit chilly, actually. Ah, hats and gloves weather. Right, well, I'm going to say cheerio. OK. Lovely well, to talk to you. thanks for calling. <laughs> and you. Speak to you later. Jolly good. Bye. Bye. Hmm. Well, that, uh, that was interesting. I think you'd want to do it in uh, too noisy an environment, but uh, you can make phone calls on your PSP. I've proved it. So overall, PSP 3000, I mean, I think they are small, worthwhile improvements. If you had one of the original PSPs and uh, you used it quite heavily, it might well be worth upgrading, mainly for the, for the better screen. If you've got a... PSP 2000, I don't think these differences are, are likely to make an upgrade worthwhile. But sadly, what you always think when you use a PSP, though, is that what a lot of wasted potential. If only Sony really developed it, if only they gave it that keyboard it needs, if only they gave it a better web browser. These are the things they ought to be doing with it, rather than tinking about with these little sort of marginal improvements. Hmm, still a pity. John, despite your moans, I still really love the PSP. It's a great way of playing your games and watching movies when you're out on the go. I agree. I mean, it's still a great portable games console, which, thanks to the latest improvements, is that little bit better. Right, now time for the news. And first off, we've got a laptop that positively encourages you to stick your grubby fingers all over the screen. It's HP's new TouchSmart X2. Um, it's the world's first consumer laptop with multi-touch technology actually built into the display rather than the trackpad. Using HP's interface, you can uh, crop and manipulate your photos, uh, browse the web, manage your music collection, all that sort of thing. Yes, the display is on a swivel mount, so you can use it as a PC display or a tablet, and it comes with a rechargeable digital ink pen, so you can make notes, do sketches, and then convert them to text afterwards. As for the vital statistics, the display is 12.1 inches across, it has 1200 by 800 pixels, and the machine uses a 
of uh, AMD Turian X2 Ultra Dual Core Mobile or their Dual Core Mobile processors. It's available in January at prices from £799. Next is the release of the Blackberry Javelin, which will be known in the UK as the Curve 8900. It comes with the standard trackball, QWERTY keyboard and Wi-Fi, but has a 3.2 megapixel camera and GPS. Unlike the Bold and the Storm, it doesn't have 3G connectivity, which is a surprise, but it is expected to share the Bold's 2.4-inch half VGA screen. That's the same resolution as an iPhone screen, but in a smaller space. Rumour has it the phone will be released on the 20th of December. And finally, 3 is bringing Sky TV to its mobile handsets. You'll be able to uh, watch live mobile TV channels like Sky News, Sky Sports, CNN, BBC and... ITV channels and it'll cost you five pounds a month or a pound a day if you don't want to commit yourself for that long. This service is available now but it will cut into your data allowance so make sure you're on three's unlimited internet add-on to avoid a hefty bill. Time now for one of Dion's how-to's, her easy-to-follow guides that help you get the most from your gadgets. Yes, and this week it's all about making telephone calls from your computer. The internet is brilliant for providing easy access to an unlimited amount of information, as well as enabling you to communicate with people all over the world by email and chat. But believe it or not, you can also use your computer as a phone. So here's the Gadget Show's guide for using your PC as a phone. I've got my desktop computer here and it's pretty much hooked up to the internet all day. And to use it as a phone, all I need is some software and a headset like one of these, which you can buy from about a tenner from all good electrical retailers. There are a number of internet phone services available on the web, but I feel the most user-friendly is Skype. You just have to go through a simple installation process, set up an account and you're ready to go. Then you can add the names and numbers of your favourite contacts, the next thing you need to do is add some credit. Now the great thing about Skype is that it's really cheap to call whoever you want all over the world. So you're going to find that £10 worth of credit is going to last quite a long time no matter what country you're calling. But if it does run out and you don't want to top up again, you can use it as a free messaging service. And you can use it with your webcam for video chatting too. So now I've got it all set up, I'm going to give John a call to see how his filming is going. Ah, call. Hello? Hello, John, it's Dion. You're the mystery caller that comes up as call. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm trying out Skype on my computer. Um, how's, yes, how's filming going? It's going very well, actually, yes. Oh, brilliant. The sound quality is really good. It is, actually. I think Skype seems to have come on, rather. It's got better, hasn't it? There's less of that delay. Yeah, no, there's no delay at all. It sounds just like I'm using my mobile phone. Yeah. Well, I won't keep you. Um, I know you've got lots of work to do, so I'll see you back in the office. <laughs> OK. Lovely to talk to you, as ever. And to you. Speak to you later, John. Cheerio! Bye! So there you go. Using your PC as a phone is a great way of staying in contact with friends and family all around the world. And we'll stop those fights over who gets to use the phone first. Well, it's great to know you've got that option, isn't it? I mean, although, as ever, with phone calls, you've got to weigh your options carefully. It could be that if you're calling another mobile, it's cheaper to use some of the bundled minutes in your own contract, for example. And for some people, it could be absolutely fantastic. I mean, for kids at home in the evening, they can chat to their mates endlessly for free. Yeah, and there's also other packages available. I mean, you can chat for free on Windows Live Messenger or make calls to landlines using Yahoo. And I really wish there had been something like this available when I was little, because I was always getting booted off the phone for talking to my friends. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's all we've got time for this week, but next week we've got a special edition of The Gadget Show Web TV celebrating that glorious time of the year that is Christmas. Yes, and we will be counting down our top 50 favourite Christmas gadgets. See you then.